an enthusiastic viewer of my channel has sent me this big bundle of flax fibers. Um, they've already been retted, he tells me, which means that he spread them out on the ground and they got wet with the dew in the morning and they started to rot a little bit. And so the outer husk of the, the fibers has started to break down, which should mean that they're reasonably easy to, uh, to, to, to shed down to the, the fibers and we can make some bowstrings. That was his idea. And uh, to help me do this, um, I've asked my friend Mark to come along. And uh, now Mark's done, you've done quite a lot of um, sort of bushcrafty things, haven't you? Yes, yeah, I've made some nettle gorges before, so we'll see how, uh, see how this plays out. It looks interesting. Okay, and uh, he's been taught by Lofty Wiseman, you know. Oh, yes. Um, and somewhere you have footage, don't you, of Lofty Wiseman rowing a slowly Sink, sinking... Sinking in a dinghy, yes. <laughs> in a dinghy, yes. Not very dignified. Uh, right, now already you've given it a quick go, haven't you? Where, where's the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Wow, so this took you how many minutes to produce that length? About five minutes, I'd say. Five minutes, and that was with no tools, that was just shedding just, the, yeah, the husk yeah, by stripped hand. It, stripped it, twisted it, I think it's a reverse twist. And it's pretty flipping strong already, so that's that's a good sign. Yeah, we just got to work out what, what a bowstring will need, really, and it's how thick we want to get it. Okay. How long is yeah. the challenge? Okay, now we have no specialist tools. Uh, my training is that I have seen one video on how someone else did it, and he had quite a lot of specialist tools. Uh, so we're going to have to improvise. Um, so here we go, two guys who know a little bit, giving it a go. I've assembled some stuff. Uh, one thing is a wooden sword, because in a video I, I, do, yeah. Yeah, in a video I saw, uh, the guy held bundles of it and whacked it with a sword-like thing uh, to, to knock bits of the husk off. Uh, I've also got uh, a selection of forks with various different shaped tines, rounded, square, fine and flat, uh, which might work. Yeah, hopefully, drawing them, drawing them to three, hopefully it'll pull the uh, out fibers off and uh, we'll separate out the inner, we'll see. Uh, I was thinking that so you hold, hold, hold the bundle and move the fork, which is the opposite of what uh, the guy in the video was doing, where he had a table with lots of nails sticking up and he was dragging the, the, the flax through the static nails, but uh, we'll just reverse it and... Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Yeah, give it a go. Absolutely. Right. Uh, choose your fork, sir. Go on. Right. Thank you. Right. And this is what we're going to try to, to make. It's a bowstring. So it's, it's about, oh, about yay long. And um, got some idea of the thickness from this. Uh, but this is specialist uh, bowstring stuff. This is, um, it might not even be real flax. I think it's some sort of synthy flax. Um, so I would err on the side of thicker than this. Um, yes, when you pull on a string, it's very difficult to snap. Um, but the bow, of course, comes to a very sudden halt. When you twang, the string goes zhoop, and comes to that violent yeah, halt, yeah. Uh, which we can't really synth uh, yeah, synthesize very well thicker, with. But you, you might sort of knock your arrows, I think, if you get too thick with it. So, let's see. Well, yeah, but a, a good bit of thickness means the arrows don't fall off the string annoyingly. Anyway, so there's the length we're going for. I, th I think we can do this. Yep, I, yep. I, have, I have faith now. Sure right, so let's get a great uh, handful of this stuff out. Yep, yes. Right. Oh, brilliant paracord. You can never have too much so of that. He said he'd send me enough for a bowstring. I, I have a feeling he sent me enough for about 50 yeah, bowstrings. That pulls it, right? A rusty one. Right. Uh, okay. You start with the fork. I'll start whacking with a... With a... Yes! Look, bits are coming off. Not so how's that going? Not a lot happening here. I think I think I need to break the back of the outer covering before it. This is just yeah, mincing it really. That's, yeah, yeah. So freeing up, maybe freeing the outer, and then. Right. So initial trials with the fork unsuccessful. Yeah, I think I think you need to. You need, we need a different mechanism for getting that outer husky off before the fork can be. Fork's great. For, Right, now one hand method I saw him use is he just sort of, he just sort of did that. 
Uh-huh. And, I don't know, now, bits are flying now, off, aren't they? Now we can tease that thing. Hmm. I'm unconvinced. Right, now what we've got here is some little fibres. So these are, these are good fibres that have ripped out. Yeah. And I believe this is called tow, which was kept and was used for uh, various other uses, including, I think, lighting fires and stuffing pillows and also uh, weaving back into lower quality string. No, it just seems to be stripping it too fine, isn't it? Uh, would a change of fork help, do you think? It. We could try if, yeah, yeah. A round, that's a rounded, a more rounded um, tine. Gentler, but maybe gentler is not what we want. Hmm. They seem to be breaking an awful lot of the fibres. Yeah, I think, I think we're just stripping it here. It needs a rethink. I've got some virgin bits here, and it's quite stiff. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm really tempted to wring it, uh, like like... Like, you know, wringing something out to dry it, um, but the, the chap in the video never never did that, so I don't want to do it much. Uh, but maybe if I break it up this way, he had what he had was a, a, a hinged thing with a plank, a gap, a plank, a gap, and a plank, and uh, on the top hinge, um, two planks with a gap, and they went into the gaps of the thing below. So it was a big chomping thing, and he went ka chomper, ka chomper, ka chomper. Uh, so presumably we can do this sideways movement with quite a bit of vigor without breaking the internal uh, fibres. Now I'm starting in the middle, which is the easiest place to start, but I've got a horrible feeling that it's, if you've just got the middle and you then carry on from there, you're going to rip and break lots of fibres yeah, thereafter. So it as long as possible, don't you? Wow. The very thick ends, it becomes like a twig. Right, no muttering. <laughs> okay. That man's allowed to mutter if he wants to. But you can mutter in your own shed. I don't mind your muttering in a shed, but if you're making a video, no muttering. It'll annoy the ladies and gentlemen. Now the word flaxen, as of flaxen-haired, uh, meaning uh, of beautiful hair, um, also um, of, of pale colour, uh, supposedly comes from flax. And um, <clears throat> I, I can see how, with an awful lot of processing, this might eventually start to look and feel like human hair. Uh, I'm a long way off. Yeah, you can see, you can see, you can see. That, that looks a lot blonder than mine. <laughs> a lot blonder. Yeah, yeah. You made an ooh ooh sound as though you made a discovery. Two, oh, two, the two, double two, fork two, technique. He's two, double forking it, ladies four. and gents. So, have you doubled your efficiency? Well. Yeah, I think if you were trying to uh, make a thatched roof and you wanted to tie down a lot of battens and so forth, and really what it looks like is not that important. Um, Perhaps you wouldn't process it very, very thoroughly. Okay, I'm now starting to get something a bit hair-like. You see, I, I mean, I'm tempted, there's definitely enough for a false moustache. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, you could do magnificent tash. Now then, is it going to make much difference if I turn it round and stroke the other way? Do you think there's a sort of a grain to it? Well, yeah, I was, I was originally working from the thick end to the fine end, but uh, I've gone back the other way, and it seems to so it seems all right. Definitely want to do outdoors. This um, we tried just <laughs> processing one strand of it uh, in my front room, and that's going to be a fair bit of work for my Hoover later. So twist, and now Mark demonstrates the twisting technique. Okay, so. Twisting kink. until it naturally kinks. kinks. Grasp then, the kink with your side, thumb. Yeah, one side, twist it forwards. Mm -hmm. and your finger bring the other side round the back. Okay. Twist it forwards, round the back. Ah, so you're twisting the same way with your right hand Forward, all the time. Round the back. It's 
quite difficult to keep the tension on this thicker cordage. Mm -hmm. I have started too thick. Around okay, so the idea is, yeah, that's looking a little bit thick for a bowstring. Twist around the back. And just keep going, twisting it forward. I like it, but how do you, that you haven't got enough length to do a full bowstring in one go. So now we right. introduce yeah. new fibres. So I, I, th I think just literally put it on, put it on top. Smooth that down. Alright. Stick on top and just twist in. Just twisting in, I think, yeah. Okay. New horizons in technology as I experiment. Exactly. If, only, with if, if, if only humanity could invent devices that could do this for us. Yes, they're called servants. <laughs> anyway. D husk! 20 tons of threepence a day. <laughs> if we were late, we were beaten. But it were a good life. <laughs> Perhaps we've invented a new breakfast cereal while we're on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, sweep all this lot, mould it into the likeness of a shredded wheat, and yeah, no yeah, one yeah. would be able to tell. Start our own health food business. It's wholesome. <laughs> Develop the kind of grip strength that let you crack walnuts doing this all day. That or arthritis by the time you're 20. I do remember the first time I ever used a, a, a quern for, for querning wheat. You put a handful of wheat on the top of a flattish uh, stone and then you had a, a ball shaped roughly stone and you went like that. And uh, after doing that for a minute or two, uh, I'd already invented the rotary quern <laughs> in my head. I think this is an incredibly inefficient way of doing this. Come on. But it took mankind, it seems, thousands of years to invent the rotary quern. Uh, and this is excellent evidence for a Stone Age man being seriously thick. That are very good unions. Oh, well, yes, yes. <laughs> Exactly. So the early, the early rotary querns, which we haven't found because they were so rare, they, they got smashed up by Luddites. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. We sat there and got on with it. I stripped the outer husks off the fibres and Mark twisted these into string. Not the husks, the, the fibres. Uh, this took about two hours, sometimes working in silence, but mostly discussing important topics like the films of Conan. We refer, of course, to the original and best uh, Conan film made by... Um, uh, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, and at, when it was made, I would say that it was the, the best swords and sorcery film ever made, it's a quite, it's a classic. which Great soundtrack. says an awful lot for how low the bar was, because it's really not that good a film, even though it does have the classic line, I thought it was just another snake cult, <laughs> um, and it has a man punching a, a camel unconscious in it, so that, that, that's good as well. Um, it's not very faithful to the character. He's going to the disguise as well. He disguised himself as a pilgrim. Tea oh, yeah. Tea towel on his head. <laughs> what? They fooled me. And I, I agree. Um, the, the score by Basil Poldaris. Yep. I have yep. the CD of it and I've listened to it many times. That, isn't it Oliver Stone? Well, Oliver, directing I'm, it. I'm sure Oliver Stone's involved in Conan. Um, don't know. I, I'm, yeah, I'll put money on that. But uh, yes, and uh, an awful lot of people now think that Conan says, ow, 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 Conan. Uh, that, that's how Conan is. He's not like that at all in the, in the, in the, in the books. He's, um, he's described in the books as moving like a panther, which is something that Arnold Schwarzenegger is definitely <laughs> not capable of doing. Again, I think he had to de bulk to do the film. Because he came straight from bodybuilding in that film. He just won Mr. Universe. And he, or had, to, he, he? had to lose muscle because he couldn't move the sword. He couldn't. He couldn't move. He couldn't lift his arms enough to move <laughs> the sword around. And presumably, if he had to scratch an itch on his back, he just had to hire someone. <laughs> There's a great clip somewhere. It's in the clip where somebody's put a post-it note on the back of bodybuilder and, and asked him <laughs> to get it off. He can't. Yeah, he can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Well, now, ha <laughs> ha! How's that for a tash? Uh, eh? uh? You can make you can make old wise old man in kung fu movie. Ah, my kung fu is better than your kung fu. 
Right, you can keep supplying me with bits, I'll keep trying. Uh, get, okay, I mean, it's this not... Thick yet. That's the problem. It, oh. It's not great, and it, every time I just run my hand through it, I get great no. big lumps coming out of it, but I think that's, that's, okay. right. that's a, a reasonably useful amount of stuff oh, there. Yeah. Right. I think this makes me chief weaver or something, you know, you're, you're just a supplier. I'm the craftsman here. Ah! <laughs> Look, I found this letter. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't. Yeah. <laughs> it might give us some clues. Dear Mr. Nicholas, your flax, as promised, enjoy making your bowstrings. Regards, Billy. Billy. Thanks, Billy. Thank you, Billy. P.S. If you don't manage this time, I will give you next year's harvest. <laughs> and that is a picture of. Oh, that's Richmond Castle. Ah. Mm. Very nice. Thank you, Billy. But no clues as to how to do this, I notice. You know, come on, Billy. I was hoping that it would smell exotic and rustic and... And... Uh, yeah, it's just, just like dry grass, isn't it? <laughs> it yes, yeah, very unremarkable smell. This is very fast growing. I'm told that you can go from seed to flower in a hundred days. And... This stuff can get very tall. It is possible to get it long enough to make an entire bowstring without any breaks in the fibre. So the uh, the flax is over six feet long, and so you can make the bowstring with uh, without having to introduce any new fibres. Yeah. If that is, you're good enough at processing it so that you can actually get a six foot fibre out of a six foot stem. Uh, at the moment, I'm not sure I could manage that. Yeah, fair racing through it, although that's more of a bow rope <laughs> than string. I think you, that said, you said you said overdo it, over engineer it. I said uh, slightly on the thick, and you said that because it was thick, you were finding it more difficult. Oh, I've done it again. What have you done? Oh, it's, it's, it's oh uh, uh, yes, yes. You, um, I had that problem when I was platting. Uh, you just have to stop every now and again. And, um, you lose bit, I'm losing the integrity of this. Losing the integrity? Losing the integrity. We can't have the integrity uh, lost. We need the integrity. Well, I just did that by hand, and it seemed quicker, to be honest. <laughs> so, right, um, right, you and your shortcuts. <laughs> craftsman, craftsman this. Just get a bit, get a small bit. And just strip it by hand. God. Now Mark and I both went to a bushcraft um, course many years ago and what I thought was hilarious at the time uh, was that it was so incredibly obvious uh, which tool belonged to which of us. Uh, the, the, the website has said uh, that all tools will be provided and you don't have to bring anything at all uh, and uh, absolutely everyone completely ignored that didn't they oh, and, yeah, and turned yeah, yeah. up with great big bags load of bag loads of stuff that they wanted to try out. Yeah. And uh, everything I had um, had an antler handle and um, was made out of um, damascened uh, steel with, with, with brass fittings and went into a leather sheath with little twiddly bits on it. It was all ye olde, authentic stuff. And absolutely everything you had was matte black and all straight lines and all machined out of a single lump of titanium. That kind of, yeah. 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 It was a tactical, you had tactical, stuff that was tactical. 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 No yeah. one knows what tactical means uh, other than that it's the sort of look that, that you had. It, it means it's more expensive, I think. Oh, so, yeah. is that what it means? Yeah. And look, I've, I've, I've layered it for you. So it's <laughs> gradually thinner, which you can feed in in a subtle way, I was thinking. Oh, well, is that going to help at all? We're onto advanced barbering now. <laughs> Now that just sort of happened. Right. Uh, but at this end, I've still got a few bits. Ooh. I'm nearly there. Give it another minute or two. OK. Well, I'm just using my thumbnail. So what was the best thing you learned from Lofty Wiseman? Oh. Somebody asked him, um, what were you doing during the Iranian embassy siege, Lofty? Uh, I can't say much, but I got up very early that morning. <laughs> I went on a survival weekend in the Brecon Beacons with some uh, ex-squaddies 
and uh, I have to say I was not impressed by their behaviour. Um, they, uh, they were, they were Thank you. bullies and show-offs who didn't really know quite what they were saying. I, I kept having to correct them when, when they, um, <laughs> after I'd corrected them a few times when they were te you, like, teaching, us, uh, teaching us map reading, uh, you'll be out by you'll be out by ten miles. No, you'll be out by nine hundred meters. Oh yeah, you'll be out by nine hundred meters. <laughs> after a while, they started deferring to me <laughs> on some subjects. Um, but that was the first time I ever went uh, abseiling, oh, yeah. and we abseiled off a really really high viaduct. So you've got a, an arch, and then the gap between uh, that that the support and the next arch, and so you could go down the supports like that, or you could go just free in the space between. Ooh, okay, so uh, which did you do then? Oh, I did both, I did both. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, have, I have great faith in technology. If, if, if a rope is holding my weight and the rope is properly well made and the, there's a belay, I think I'll be, I'll be fine. So um, it was one of those things where the rope comes to you, goes through the belay device, and then you, you hold it in your uh, right hand and you can, pay, uh, you can feed it through like that, but if you bring your right hand right behind you and stick it in the center of your backside, that's, that stops you. So you're free, you're, you're, you're free going down, going down, stop, like that, and then as you, somewhere around here, you, you can move slowly. So I went, <laughs> dump, yeah. dump. Yep. Is it ah oh, confidence? You see, yep. and so I went, Wee! I went and then I went jump like that, and it's just, it's a good thing that I did because this part of my hand brushed the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped myself just in time, and I think the guy at the top with the, the safety rope he, he wasn't being quick enough. He he just looked and just oh yeah he's, he seems confident enough he's fine, and uh, took his eye off me. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> whoops. Um, I mean, everything was fine, but possibly I was just a little bit too confident. Yes, I've, 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 I've upsailed once, and that, that was uh, probably enough for me. Was, was, my, mine was very, much more slow and gingerly than that. It, was a, it took me five minutes to let go of the frame <laughs> inch myself down. Oh, I just remembered, actually, I tell you like, that was the second time I'd been abseiling. The first time I went abseiling was after rock climbing and we went up on rock climbing ropes which are designed to break a fall gently so they've got quite a lot of stretch in them and then we abseiled down on rock climbing rope which uh, has got a lot of stretch in it and so you go bump like that and then you go up a little bit then you go bump like that and you're on a longer rope now so you, you come up a bit more then you go bump and now on a really quite a long rope so now you come up and by the time you get to the bottom of the cliff which was big 45 degree boulder scree you are bouncing around all over the shop and trying to get off the rope safely at the bottom is really difficult and uh, a lot of rock climbing clubs I know 10-15 uh, years ago just banned abseiling uh, because most of the serious accidents rock climbing uh, clubs had was, was, was abseiling yeah. down after a <laughs> climb um, yeah so if you're going to abseil don't do it on a bouncy stretchy rope Now another thing we've done together uh, is that we have saved the empire from chaos. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted, as yeah. Brigadier Beveridge, but that was possibly my best experience of role playing ever because it was a campaign that actually kept going with very good players uh, for years. It was an epic campaign, yeah. <laughs> You just remind me of the Contiki project. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah. The right. guy who sailed across the Atlantic. Very good, yes. Yep. He was Norwegian, I think. And he sailed across the Atlantic in a boat made out of reeds in order to prove that it could be done. Uh, and I remember going to the Contiki Museum. Yeah. And uh, the claims he made were, I thought, somewhat overblown. I, particularly, I was unimpressed by his claim that he had um, proven as though, you know, finally, scientifically, and for the first time, that uh, people from different countries could work together. <laughs> I think, well, actually, <laughs> I don't think that's a first, um, no. Thor. If a string, frankly, that thick is not strong, strong enough, yeah, true. then, then yeah. the whole thing is a yeah. failure. So how many, how many people are going to tell us how to do this properly? Oh, um... Uh, point out every mistake we made. I would say 
that I have very, very nice and polite and constructive viewers, who's, and, and that my comment section is gratifyingly um, civil, I would say. Yeah. But yes, there will be some people, maybe a score or so, who will very politely and constructively point out things that we could have done very considerably better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, I'm not sure of the origin, but I do have to say, when I'm waiting for you, I am at a loose end. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, well, I, I lost patience with this and just, <laughs> just combed all that lot out, <laughs> which is an awful lot of wastage. Right, what, what do you get outside of mines that you don't get outside of dungeons? What do you get outside of mines? Yeah. Uh, spoil heaps. Spoil heaps. <laughs> <laughs> That's just where all the mountains. Oh, are. I always assume that they just they just um, uh, made, made, made yeah made two dungeons and put the <laughs> put the earth in the other one. Yes, if you wanted to know where a really big dungeon was, you just comb the countryside for spoil heaps. <laughs> it's a very good point. This could be getting close. Oh, oh, oh. What? We then had to turn the string into a bowstring and string the bow. A pretty simple matter, you might have thought. We already had a bowstring to copy for length, but somehow we managed to take 10 minutes to sort this out. <laughs> if we end up cutting this, I'll cry. I shall spare you having to watch it all. How come it's that far out? I don't know. Well, thank goodness you used a good scout knot, so it should be easy to untie, like any good knot. <laughs> How will we be out by... Whoa! It didn't help that the new string kept stretching under tension. We have now strung the bow. We've had to come indoors because uh, there was a shower of rain and it was threatening to uh, short out all the circuits of my rather expensive camera. Um, it's got to... We've, we've managed to overshoot by... By this much, uh, we were 18 inches short, and then the next thing Side we knew, wise, yeah. Yeah, obviously he got a lot better <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> at making the cordage. Anyway, yeah, it's... so <clears throat> we measured out the length of the string, strung the bow, and almost immediately it was right the way along flush with the bow. The bow ended up straight with uh, the, the string taut against it. <laughs> Um, so we shortened it and exactly the same thing happened again so we really shortened it a lot and now we've got it to this stage now it was um, about this far away from the bow and already it's settled into there so it is stretching uh, it's a brand new bowstring and it's made out of vegetable fiber and so yeah it's and the, the, the way it's twisted there'll be a lot still to take up in there yeah. Maybe a lot of, uh, uh, so really, we need to uh, twist it some more to get uh, get a better bracing height. But uh, but it, at least you know, hey, it hasn't snapped, and we've got enough of it, and it makes. Oh. Okay. What just happened there? I twanged it, and it's still in at that end, and it's still in at that end. <laughs> so why did it suddenly go slack? What just happened? What just happened, Mark? I have no idea. I just twanged it. And it went slack. It wasn't twisted. Is it? Um. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no. Oh. Ah, we have half a bowstring, ladies and gents. It's given here. And that was just from a little boing, a little pluck. So perhaps it's a good job we didn't try shooting an arrow. Oh, that's annoying. Fortunately, we've got quite a lot of excess to work no, with at this end. end. People need to, yeah, I'm not sure how the knot tying affects, affects its integrity, but... There's that word integrity again. Did you notice? Oh, you've tied a new loop in already, have you? Yeah. Oh, that was quick. Okay, so loop goes on. I mean, you, you were saying it was too thick before. It is, th yeah, it has thinned down. <laughs> Oh, wow, now I'm having to bend the bow an awful lot more than I was before. Wow, you've really shortened the string a lot. Was a deliver. Right Are we in? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, <laughs> now the opposite problem. We've now got a crazy huge bracing distance. Um, 
but it should improve as this over the next minute or two settles in and we, we look at the really quite thin bit there <laughs> I notice uh, it's quite a lot thicker there yeah uh, have you got some safety glasses <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it it looks quite it's quite thick until about here-ish, and then the you were complaining it was too thick, honestly. All right. Yeah. Well, I think the thinnest bits are about right, but then again, we have just uh, experienced it one. Creek. It was a creek there. Catastrophic failure. Um, right. So this is not a good bracing distance to shoot the bow at. Um, but it took us several attempts to get it this much, and now it's gone. Now we've gone too far. Um, it's not going to do the bow power of good if I shoot it with this, this bent, but I shouldn't break it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, and it's it did come in a little bit. It's a very noisy bowstring, I have to say that. Here we go then, test firing one. Uh, the, the bracing distance is way too high, um, and there is some trepidation involved because this could snap and that could, could be bad. But uh, I'll, I'll perhaps not pull it all the way back. Well, hey. Well, I got in between the eyes. Um, it didn't snap. It didn't snap. Should we pull it out and go for a full power one? I think we should. Okay, right. Nothing ventures. Whoa, hey. Hey, not bad shot as well. Uh-huh. Okay, actually, I, even then I didn't pull it perhaps all the way back, but that was a fair bit further back. Um, the bracing distance seems to have stopped settling now. Uh, is that the right angle? Yeah, near enough, about there. Okay, I'm a little bit worried about hitting the floor with the bottom of the bow, because that's stone. I pulled it back quite, quite far that time, and another absolutely between the eyes. Good group. That Frenchie is dead. We have a functioning bowstring. Yeah, for a couple of hours work, I think that's not a bad effort, is it? We've not made flax cordage before. We've, we've got to this point, you fired three, arrows with expert precision. Three dead Frenchmen. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's a bit hairier than I like it, but possibly we could singe off yeah, the excess or maybe just get a yeah. small pair of, of scissors perhaps and trim it. A uh, bit of beeswax on there. The bracing distance is still wrong, um, but um, that's, that's we've got plenty of, plenty of uh, excess to work with, so that's not a big problem. Yeah, and I, I think if we'd gone thinner, we'd have it's uniformity versus it's a uniformity versus the strength, isn't it? That you can get it, you can get away with thinner if it's more uniform. And yes, yes, there are a couple of thicker bits on this, but that doesn't matter too much. No, it, it proof, it, yeah, we've done it. A couple of hours work, and we've made a working bowstring. I'm, I'm pretty chuffed for that. Yes, although let us re let us remind ourselves uh, that the, uh, the the bowstring has broken once already under really not very much stress. <laughs> I just plucked it. I just I moved it what about three inches and let go. Not that much went twang, yeah. and it went. Doing. Yeah, and we lost it. But a bowstring made of flax, made sort of in the old old fashioned way. I'm I'm happy with that. Definitely. Thank you very much for coming, Mark. Thank you. And this is how much mess we made making one bowstring. Yes, that is one bowstring's worth of mess. And here is that string displayed on a velvet gaming table. Now the bit you're looking at is the bit that was used for shooting arrows. The excess, which was never stretched, is noticeably thicker. Not too shabby, I like to think, for a first attempt and a couple of hours of work. I know what you're thinking. When the wizard casts his fireball at the archers, do all their bowstrings burn? <laughs> Let's do the science.
Here is the piece of string we removed when it snapped. You can see here is where Mark started making the string. Here is the strong loop we tied in it, which seemed so good. Uh, but alas, here you can see where one of the two strands of the main string parted. But it's a useful thing upon which to experiment. So let's try uh, making fire, which turns out to be hard. Oh, there we go. So the, whoa, okay, so the wispy stuff burns off very easily. But you see, then the fire dies. And if we uh, hold the flame to the thick part, oh, a little bit of flame. No, as soon as I take the fire away, it goes out. So the thick bit just sort of chars. I just dipped it in water and cool it off and oh no it was weak Did the